So now I've given you an overview of how instruments are laid out in contact. Before we get into building our own instruments, there are a few things that we need to know. For example, we need to know how to start by creating an empty instrument. And there are a couple ways to do it. One is to choose New Instrument from the Files menu. And that creates a blank instrument. It's named New by default. And we can open up the instrument to get inside it by clicking on the wrench. Once we click on the wrench, we have access to all the various editors and modules that we need to build and customize our instruments. For example, if we go to the mapping editor, that's where we will load in samples, either from the contact browser or our file system. We will define zones for those samples that specify key range and velocity, for example. And uh, we can build our instrument starting from there. We get out by clicking the wrench or by clicking the X up here and we are out of instrument edit mode. Now over on the right are arrows that let us switch between different instruments we have loaded in our instrument rack. So we don't have to exit edit mode, we can stay in edit mode. And the disk means to save your work. Floppy disks are a little outdated by this point, but that's the symbol. We can just click on a name to rename the instrument, click save, it'll ask me where to save it, and just like with any other instrument in contact, we can choose to save the patch plus the samples or a monolith which contains everything in a single file. I'll specify the directory where I want to save my instrument and that's it. Once I've done that, I can just click on the floppy disk and it will save every time I click on it. And then we have undo buttons, undo and redo. And in order to enable undo, we have to go under options. On the handling page, we'll see this checkbox down below Enable Undo. And there's a warning there that it may slow down GUI performance, but frankly, I've never seen that happen. On, on faster machines, it's not an issue. And Undo is much more important than a fast GUI, I think. So I always turn that on, and it allows me to undo changes that I'm making to instruments. Now, if I go to the File menu when I'm in Instrument Edit Mode, you'll notice it's slightly different. It just gives me options to save this instrument, save it as the default. If I have a nice template I want to use, I can save that as default or save the entire multi. When I'm out of instrument edit mode, I'm back to the normal file menu. Now I'm going to open up my browser and I'll show you another way to build an instrument. And that is simply dragging a sample or multiple samples to the instrument rack. So let's grab a base sample here. We're just going to drag it right in. It automatically creates a new instrument for us. And if we go into the instrument edit mode, into the mapping editor, we see it assign that one sample across the entire keyboard. It's not the best sounding bass sound because it's all built on a single sample, but you get the idea. Now Contact is smart enough to transpose that one sample across the entire keyboard so that it changes by pitch as I play different notes. So that's why it's sounding like a real instrument here. If I drag in another instrument or another wave file, it creates another instrument. Remember, I can switch between instruments using these arrow keys. And if I open up the instrument I just added, once again, it's assigned across the whole keyboard. I just made a change there and I undid it. I can redo and undo to my heart's content. And I can even click that little arrow next to the undo or redo buttons to see a complete history of all the things I've done makes it very easy to undo and redo things. There's one last thing I want to show you, and that's this info button. We've talked about the info button in the 105 course, but it's really useful when you're editing instruments because there are so many different controls. It really helps to have that on. And then any button or control I'm hanging my mouse over, you'll see a little pop-up down at the bottom of the screen, which explains what that button or knob or slider is for. So it's really useful to turn info on as you're getting accustomed to the contact interface. And remember, Control-I on Mac, F9 on Windows turns on info.